Welcome to the deep dark, arguably Minecraft's most difficult biome to survive. Animals? No. Nope. Mobs? No. Nope. Food? I'm sorry if you can get seeds. And of course, the elephant in the room of the warden. They both hit like a truck anyway. This is a challenge I once deemed too difficult to do. And I also did try to do this in a 100 days concept, but after two or three days, I realized that this was going to be very difficult to do. You'll, you'll see why. But now that I am definitely a better Minecraft player, I'm going to survive 100 days in this world. And to make it even harder, we're going to do it in hardcore mode. Hey, if you go to enjoy the video then please consider giving it a like and if you enjoy content like this then why not subscribe i've got one more month to get to 200k so let's see if we could do that so i asked you lovely people on my community post hey what should be my next single biome 100 days and this one won pretty comfortably but welcome to the deep dark baby in case it's not abundantly clear what this is the deep dark biome is the biome that can spawn the warden right there you can see there is a warden spawn oh there's even one right close to me right there and they can spawn anywhere in this world and i mean absolutely anywhere. So the goal is simple. Oh, there's one right here. There's two right here. My goodness. The goal is simple. Survive. Make it day 100. Make a base that's um absolutely just impenetrable to warden spawning. Well, the ultimate goal of this 100 days is by day 100, I'm going to fight me a warden. Will I win? Oh, but that's, we don't talk about that. We're, we're going to find out. For now, we're going to head over to that tree and we're going to grab ourselves some wood. Let's just, uh, let's just play some Minecraft and see what happens. So the early goals here was to get me some some regrowable stuff like saplings and wheat. As I mentioned in the intro, the only thing that will spawn here is the warden. And I don't think I could eat that boy. Speaking of, here he is in all of his scary glory. I better keep away from him. Ah, I spawned a second one. Good job. Oh, sugar cane. Now again, as I mentioned in the intro, I knew that animals couldn't spawn in this world, but at the time I wasn't actually sure whether mobs could spawn. However, as you can see by night, uh, no, no, they can't. Not a single hostile mob can- Oh, I forgot about the warden. I found myself a semi-safe spot. There's no shriekers in the nearby vicinity. So it'll do. I can at least plant myself some farms and at least try and survive here for the time being. Day two and I dug down, instantly finding myself some coal, which was quite nice. Deep Dog just got a whole lot brighter. While sticking down, I ended up actually going through two pickaxes down here. I was able to pick myself up some iron, some more coal, and I've got myself some lapis along the way. But with the second pickaxe breaking, I needed to check on my food situation and uh, yeah, this isn't going well. <laughs> well, let's at least make ourselves some more pickaxes and head down. Deep play, huh? Nah, better not. Let's cook some iron instead. So I found myself a cave on day three. I wonder what's in here. Oh, well, all right then. Now, one of the few glorious things about the ancient city was that I should be able to get myself some wool down here. So if I could just sneak in and well, well, all right, it's time to leave. And sadly, with the wardens down below and my food situation up top, I really am going to have to play the waiting game a little bit. So either that or starve, take your pick. The rain help. I did have to wait until the next day where I got one bread. This is fine. I will need to improve the farm very quickly. I mean, this is legitimately the only way I can get food at the moment. So after adding some water and grabbing some more seeds, I'm back on it. We'll dig out some more land before waiting again for the crops. Who would have thought this entire thing would just become the waiting game, huh? Hello, all watchers. I am Dr. Haven, and I specialize in all Minecraft and Minecraft-related things. If you've never seen me before, I come into these videos just to explain a couple of things that will make things simple. Also, Haven pays me big time to show up, so let's go through this. Let's quickly talk about the food situation. As mentioned, the entire world is deep dark, meaning of course no mobs of any kind. This includes passive and hostile mobs. Even fish can't spawn here, so basically there is no way to get food from animals. What this simply means is that at this point in time, the only decent way for me to actually get food is to use this wheat farm. Unfortunately, crops are slow growing, and of course I have no food. I had to wait here for quite a while. Here we are on day 9 with 23 pieces of bread. It's not a lot, but it'll do. I also finally decided to plant myself some sugarcane farm. I don't know why I did do this before, but hey, here we are. And with the food, I think it's time to go right back into the city. So it was a lot of sneaking around, but here's everything I found. Got myself some wool, picked up a couple of potions and a little bit of armor. Bones are always nice. Definitely gonna take those bones. I ended up finding your mother, aka a pretty damn good hoe. That was rude. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, Carla bit me in the butt and wouldn't spawn, so I knew it was time to leave. Here's my haul on day 10. It's not terrible, I'd say. Now, I think what I'm gonna need to end up doing very soon is making my base warden proof. So I think we should all agree that the best place to put a waterproof base is in the water over here. And so I set myself up some wooden pillars, got myself some cobblestones flooring, did quickly have to head back to the caves to get some more. It only cost me one water spot. Not, not too bad. Look at him over there. Look at this dude. And for the first time in this video, for the first time in 10 days and 10 nights, I was finally able to sleep. Nice. I began moving my stuff over on day 11. I have no idea where I got this darkness effect from, like, at all. I even moved the farms over since I want to make a platform 
for them to do at some point. And that point is right now. Let's make ourselves a platform. This dirt platform with the crops will actually be bigger than the original platform, but boy, do I need a lot of crops so it works out. We'll need to fill it out with dirt though. It took an extra day. Here we are on day 12 getting the rest of the dirt in. Just need to add some water sources and we're good to go. And I got the seeds fully planted on day 13. Almost three stacks of seeds for the record. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be a bread city when the time comes. And with this platform done, I think I need to work on a third platform because as much as I have a main platform and a farm platform, I'm going to need to make myself a tree platform. So yeah, let's get on that. I finished off the dirt for this platform on day 14. I went to grab myself some more cobble. Was able to finish the outline. I just need to get myself a couple more wood and ah, only five logs. Well, I guess I'm planting early before I finish this one off. I'm also going to set myself up some sugar cane up here. I mean, I'm going to need that as well. So we may as well get on that too. Now I have picked up some bones from the Asian city. So on day 15, I decided that I'm going to bone mill some of the trees to use for my platform. Would that be what a smart Minecrafter does? I mean, I don't know. It's better the process, so why not? And just like that, I am out of wood. Luckily, I have more bones to wear. What's that? Oh, I just waited for the trees to grow. Oh, that's a smart thing to do. Watching this back made me realize that maybe, maybe as much as I'm a good Minecraft player, I may not be a smart Minecraft player. It's, it's fine. We move on. And with the trees growing on day 16, I got to cut in. Once I had enough wood spare, I returned back to the Asian city again. Well, that wasn't the staircase. You know, I did make one of the most important finds of this entire 100 days. I found myself a spawner. As mentioned 4,000 times already, mobs can't spawn in this world. However, a spawner would allow them to spawn. And so this zombie spawner, if I wanted to make it into a proper grinder, well, I'd have an infinite supply of zombies, which is fantastic. I was searching the chest, though, and sadly there wasn't anything extra here. Day 17 was pretty simple. I snuck around the ancient city trying to destroy all the shriekers that I possibly could. May have spawned a few wardens in the process. Yeah, it's no problem. Also got myself a couple extra goodies, which was very, very nice. It was a slow process, but I think, honestly, things are going pretty well here. I was still destroying shriekers on day 18. Got myself an uber apple, which was a nice reward, I'd say so. Now, I did purposely leave one shrieker over here in the corner, just in case I want to fight the warden inside of the ancient city. We shall see. Unfortunately for the rest of the shriekers, they are. Uh, they gotta go. I finally returned home on day 19, and I got myself some good stuff, all things considered. One of the things I picked up was, of course, more bones, which means I was able to get myself plenty of weed. Good stuff, I'd say. And I headed back down on day 20, where I wanted to turn this zombie spawner into a proper grinder. Though digging up deep slate with an iron pickaxe is a very, very slow task, so you'll have to bear with me. Does that bear with you? I kept going on day 21. Admittedly, it wasn't perfect, but as you can see by the drop, it did its job. To quote my dad when he first saw me, nah, it'll do. Now to get me a hopper in. I don't know how I didn't see this coming. Like, my God. There are two things that I'm hoping for here. Either A, to get myself a zombie villager, which I'm not 100% sure can spawn in the spawner, but it's worth a go. Alternatively, I'd love to get myself either a carrot or potato. The bread diet really isn't hitting it anymore for me. I was still grinding away on day 22 where I activated look.exe. My totally real thing that helps me get an extra little bit of look, which as you can see, within a couple of seconds, I got myself both a carrot and a potato, which is definitely not too shabby. With those, I did get myself back up, and I think we can all agree now that I have these. I definitely don't need this big of a wheat farm, so let's split it up a little bit. Though I initially hated them on day 23, I have actually become quite fond of composters, would you believe? They're not fantastic, but I always end up with a bunch of extra wheat seeds, which could just go into a composter, which gets myself some extra bone meal. Now, my early plan in this world was actually to conserve iron by not making myself some armor. Let's be honest for a second, the warden's gonna take me out, no matter if I am or aren't wearing iron armor. I originally thought I'd be able to pick up a lot of armor from the Asian city, because that often has high tier armor, but unfortunately, as you can tell by my loads of pines, that didn't really work out well. So let's go and find ourselves a surface cave and get myself a little bit of iron. Not gonna lie, was very unsuccessful on day 23. Day 24, and I had a lot more luck actually finding myself a decent amount of iron when... What the f- Honestly, things were going quite well here until I ended up spawning myself another warden. But by the end of the day, after avoiding the wardens, I was able to get myself about 100 iron, which is not bad at all. I got myself back to cooking on day 25. Plus, I am waiting for the cooking to happen. I may as well cut down myself some more trees. And would you look at that? 25 days in and I got myself all the armor. Who'd have funk it? And with this armor, well, I think it's time we potentially go and check out the nether. So it was yet again back to the city on day 26. Surely some diamonds down here. And yes, yes, there was. There was actually quite a few of it which got me 11 in total, which is a nice start. Could have been more diamonds if we want for those pesky little water boys. Now they're back in it again. But now let's mine ourselves some obsidian. As I was leaving, I even noticed myself even more diamonds, which was quite nice. Now then, the enchanting table. Even decided to go into the fashion sense of Minecraft by adding myself some diamond armor. Blue is in people, just so you all know. At least that's what my stylist tells me. I quickly set myself up an extra platform to put the nether portal on. And then I, of course, made the portal. And oh, go on then. I guess I'll make it look sort of 
are nice as well. If you can call this nice. And with the extra bones that I do have, I can expand the carrot farm a little bit. I am going to eat a little bit of food before I go and start exploring the nether. So, sadly, yet again, we are back to the waiting game. I ended up getting 40 spare carrots by day 30, which I thought was quite nice. Should be enough for me to go into the nether. Now, originally, I wanted to find myself a fortress or a bastion. But, honestly, a soul sand valley was pretty good as well. I can grab myself some bone blocks, 55 in total, which is really good. And for every bone block, I'll get myself 9 bone meal, which means I can now bone meal some potatoes and then I can cut them up. I think we can safely say a food problem, not a problem. You know what I realized on day 31? I, I never replanted the taters. I'm not really sure why, to be honest with you. But the next thing I need to sort out for myself is a full enchanter. So let's go ahead and deal with the leather situation. And the easiest way to do that is, of course, to kill myself some hoglins. So it was back to the nether and hoglin murdering began. The good news is on day 33 that I only need to have myself 24 leather. So I got that pretty quickly. Getting back and I firstly planted the spare taters that I actually have before realizing that I am nowhere near ready to make the level 30 enchanter simply because I don't have enough sugarcane. And so let's speed up the process and get myself some sugarcane in the wild. Admittedly, it actually wasn't too bad. There was plenty of sugarcane for me to find. It was just those pesky bloody wardens like usual. As day 34 started, I was about halfway done and more of running around until I got the rest. So it is time to head home. And this is the point where I show you that even the most skilled Minecraft player can sometimes make the most simplest mistakes. Yes, I am calling myself skilled. I've got a problem with that. You see, I may have forgotten exactly where my base was, and I don't have the coordinates to my base either. This is a certified egg on face moment. Well, let's search. So we searched on day 35. We searched on day 36. We're still searching on day 37. Really? Day 38 and we're still searching? I don't believe this. And then on day 39, I mean, I found myself a spawner. There was nothing good in it, but I'm still searching. And it was on day 40, about an hour, hour and a half of searching where I finally found my base. It was the silliest mistake I've ever made in Minecraft, my goodness. At least I can finally make myself that level 30 enchanter. Shame I don't have the levels. Also, a quick update on the food. Yeah, I think we saw it for a while. So, with this enchanter set up on day 45, I am going to need to get myself some levels. I wanted to do about 5 level 30 enchants. And so, I thought getting myself 45 levels should be enough, so it is time for me to mine as much quartz as possible. And it was on day 45 that I got 45. Alright, let's head home. Make myself a grindstone, clear myself some enchants and enchants. The most important things for me was to get looting, fortune, and infinity. And I'm fairly confident the game was trolling me a little bit here. Silk Touch, which technically does work. I can save ores for later. Looting 2, which is looting, but it's not looting 3. And infinity, but there was no power on my bow. So yeah, I got technically what I wanted, but not fully what I wanted, if that makes sense. Well, I want to get myself full diamond at some point, so I think we should head back to the city to see if we can get ourselves some. I was back in the city by day 46. So what I did learn is that because I now have Silk Touch, that when I try and break tree because they actually break via the silk touch which means I can actually pick them up which is kind of interesting. Too busy running for my life to consider anything to do with it but hey at least we got there. Also picked up a couple of diamonds which was nice. I also found myself a new chest which had a second uber apple which was fantastic and then every warden possible showed up to try and ruin the party so that was kind of nice. I was fairly confident that I was done with the ancient city on day 47 so let's go ahead and do a little bit of strip mining and hope for the best. But I got decently lucky overall finding a few diamonds along the way. I went back home on day 48 trying to get myself fortune again. Well, now let's go and do a chest plate. Wait, I just spent the levels. Ah, oh, balls! And uh, we can sort out the level shabuckle later for now. I really need to find myself a fortress to pick up myself up some blaze rods. So, uh, yeah, into the nether and hunting we go. It may have taken three days, but here we are on day 51 where I got myself the fortress. Now, I had plans. Going to get myself a little comfy here because getting blaze rods admittedly wasn't an issue at all. And as well, getting walls was really simple. However, I am actually wanting to get myself six wither skulls, setting up two beacons to find the water seemed like a really smart play to go for. Though grabbing myself six wither skulls will definitely take a minute. Though I did get the first one this day, which is quite nice. It took seven full days, but here we are on day 58 where I got the six skull. Fantastic. Let's head home. Day 59 and let's enchant. I got some pretty good stuff, all things considered. Even managed to upgrade my sword, which is quite nice. Honestly, things were going pretty well, I'd say. I did combine the silk touch picks and now I have efficiency four on here as well. But now we need to look at the big picture. So, bring back Dr. 
Havenan. And we're back at it again, Dr. Havenan here. So with 40 days left, I had some plans to do. If it wasn't incredibly obvious, the ultimate goal is for me to be able to kill myself a warden, but that is going to require me to get some better armor, some full beacons, and to do those things that will require me to do three different things. First, I need to find myself a Neverite upgrade so I can upgrade my armor, of course. I will need to collect the Neverite armor, of course, for said armor. And then finally, I just need to get myself two full beacons worth of iron blocks, which is the equivalent of about 328 blocks in total, or about 46 stacks of blocks. You know, it's not too bad, I'd say. We'll only take a couple of hours. Sure, why not? Really, I'm missing the iron farm about now, I'll tell you that much. Well, the plan was on day 60 to at least get the easy one out of the way first things first, so it was back in the left to see if I could find myself a bastion. It only took a couple of days, but there it is. Going in, and I did actually find myself a good couple of diamond pickaxes, but most importantly, got myself some pick step. Woo! And much later, despite being bamboozled by a brute, we don't talk about it, I did get myself a never right upgrade. Nice. I did make a quick pit stop home on day 63. I only dropped off a couple of things more than anything, but now it was back to digging. I am going to get myself about five Neverite Ingus, so let's get schmoovin'. Wow, that was quick. Well, for you guys, for me, it was like seven days. Here we are on day 70, getting the last of the Neverite. And we are home, and we are cooking. Well, I now need to get myself a lot of iron. So, um, mining montage? All right, day 84. Here we are. It was a lot of time mining, but I think, think I should have enough iron. Shall we go and find out? So I set up this auto cooker on day 85. With these blast furnaces, I'm hoping it won't take too long for all the iron to cook. But now, let's make myself full Neverite armor. And why not? Let's pour some trims on these bad boys. It is getting close, but I think I can finally feel ready to fight the warden. Soon. Very soon, guys. But whilst waiting for this iron to cook, I obviously needed for a beacon. So why don't we go ahead and kill ourselves some withers? Let's turn these regen potions into splash. I am a little bit worried about my bow. There is no power on it. So what I'll quickly do is make myself a second bow. Go into the nether, mine myself some quartz, get to level 30, get back home, re-enchant the son of a... Take 2 was much better on day 87, getting myself power 4. I'll also add flame on it, which I'm not going to lie. I don't think it'll do extra damage to the warden or anything, but it's worth a go. Right then, I have two withers to kill and... What's that? Oh, I didn't record the wither fights. Well, aren't I stupid? Day 88, and I was able to make myself the beacons, and then I made all the blocks. Making myself two full beacons. Resistance 2 and speed should be good with a little bit of regeneration. It turns out, though, on day 89, I still had some iron left to cook over, and I can actually make a couple more blocks, and I had myself an idea. I did actually see myself a couple of pumpkins nearby, and well, I'm pretty sure most of us know where I'm going with this one, so I'm going to quickly set myself up a pumpkin farm. Hopefully get myself a lot. Turns out I overestimated my iron, though, on day 90, and I didn't actually have to sell the pumpkin farm at all. I had enough iron for the pumpkins that I had at the time. But it's fine, nevertheless. I redid my armor and tad getting protection for on everything. And it was time. And that will get us to day 91. Now I'm doing this next little bit live because I think it's going to be a bit fun. I've pretty much done everything that I wanted to do. Prepare for this fight. Two uber apples, a couple of regeneration potions. Obviously, I have the beacons lit. Some golden apples and some food. I think we fight ourselves a warden. I'd like to make it 100% clear that I know that if I die here and the title is still I survived 100 days in the deep dark just know for a fact that I could easily just wait out the next 9 days and you know do this out of the other the only thing I can really do at this point is maybe make this sharpness 5, power 5 those kind of things but nothing that is 9 days worth so basically you know I ever die here or I, I don't know what I'll do for the next nine days. Point is, I know people may be unhappy if I start this um, a little early. Or if I die on day 91 and then the title's alive. But point is, just know, if I die here and don't make it to day 100 and the title says I survived 100 days in deep dark, I'd like to make it clear that I don't care if you think that I didn't survive it. I'm fine with that title being that title. Iron Golems probably won't do that much to them. But even if it takes off a little bit of the help, it's a start. It's something. Now, Trigger. Yeah, come on, you got this. I have faith. <laughs> Am I doing something wrong? I might be doing something wrong. He not spawned because I placed it. Do I need to find another one? One over here. Let's hope that this will trigger. I don't have the beacons currently on me. Kind of. There we go. That didn't take long. Right here we go then. I didn't mean to hit you. Sorry, chief. Golems, <laughs> please do your thing. 
Golems. Golems. Okay, they, he just ran past the golems. It's fine. Okay, I have a plan. Oh, he's coming right at me. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, we're fine. Do this quickly. Oh my word. Go, go, go! Oh my goodness gracious. Where? Oh my god, he's doing so much damage. Oh my word, where are the golems? There they are. Guys, help! <laughs> oh my god. Regen quickly. Wow, oh my god, that went horribly bad. That was awful. <laughs> I think the real problem that I had was the fact that uh, I spawned so far away from the beacons and the other way to Lear. Like, I was hoping the Iron Golems would do the damage first, not like the Iron Golems are doing anything right now. Oh, there she did it. Okay. <laughs> well then. <laughs> turns, turns, out if you, turns out if you want to beat the water, you just need six Iron Golems and a... Lucky dream. I I did die though, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, that's unfortunate to say the least. But still, we was able to kill the warden. That being said, I really hope you appreciate the video anyway. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody.